I've often thought, wouldn't it be nice being able to get a large gauge that will actually point to a specific place? So this is what we've got. Here's the chassis, the 3D printed PLA chassis. And I went ahead and bought two of the smallest, smallest servo motors that I could find. I'm incredible how small that is. Forget the brass bit, that's something else, another mistake. They are minute. Um, and I thought, well, that's good. And then subsequently realised that it wasn't. Because having dear friends carefully measured and recorded lovingly all the different heights and dimensions and everything else, I went ahead, designed something that was three, uh, 3D printed to support that, that was going to stick beautifully in a car, and then found I'd got all my measurements wrong and it was too high and didn't mesh with the other gears and got in the way and was a complete disaster. And also, the teachy little, I can't remember what you call these, the prongs, I know there's a name for them, the prong on the top, the screw that was provided, was so short it didn't actually tighten this down. And when I lovingly, having measured once and cut three times, this is quite nice actually, it did work very well and I'm going to use this again. Here's the prong, one of the prongs they provided with the small servo motor, and I engraved out that. That's lovely, look, it sits really flush, look beautiful. And then, after about three attempts, measure once, print three times. Um, printed that, which is the crank, because I realised that the nice gentleman was suggesting that I originally thought about putting the servo on the pointer, but if you do that, when you switch the servo on, it generally sort of flips around a bit first, and if you don't get the settings right, and it's say 180 degrees, and you've connected it to this, that's just going to whiz around and snap off, because they're so powerful, they've got so much torque. So, what I realised in a flash of inspiration, was that if I get the server underneath this gear with the crank on it and make this gear slightly smaller so it doesn't mesh with that, it's got nothing to do with this anymore, these two can continue whizzing round as and when required, this gear will just be able to be turned by the servo motor, which means because it's the crank, if it goes too far, it just starts going back on itself a bit. But it doesn't stop you being able to set it up with an Arduino or something, Raspberry Pi, to uh, actually point to a specific part on this. That's my plan, Stan. So, where did I got to? So that didn't work, and it was too wobbly, and it was a shame. Never mind, live and learn. And then I thought, well, forget that, because I was hoping this would have enough room just to be able to glue that on there, not have to make another version of this with slots and all that. But, in the end, to cut a long story long, I've decided to go with one of these servo motors. This is slightly easier anyway, because this is a 5 volt one, and this ran on 4.3 volts, so anyway. So this is 5 volts, I've used them before for Florence's head, and in fact Victoria's head, which is still sitting somewhere. Um, it's bigger, obviously, which really does rule out being able to try and smuggle it inside this. I'm going to have to cut a slot on the ones that have these, I was thinking, well, how can I cut this out? Are you with me? Are you ahead of me? I was thinking, oh, that's a pain I could do that. And I thought, hold on a minute. What's that noise I can hear in the background? It's the laser cutter. What a fool. I've looked it up, because I've never cut PLA plastic before with a laser cutter. No one suggests that it's going to bring on the apocalypse or anything. Sounds like you can. So I can make a jig, and then when people want to have the servo motor version, and put it in the jig, in the laser cutter, ho ho, you know, this is all the brilliant plan, and then get it to cut the rectangle out, the two little holes for the fixing screws, Bob's your proverbial auntie. Actually, I have to say, I do like this next bit. Taking something like that, fingers and thumbs, taking something like that, and my tools of the trade, and measuring it and drawing it onto the CAD software, it's very enjoyable. It's because I'm not actually having to design anything, I just have to measure I do like measuring things. Apologies for the echo and the odd angle, but I can't be bothered to put the uh, tripod down. A little top tip, the CAD program, I've drawn out that thing, and because I want to engrave it, I want to put lots and lots of little lines all over it. And the way I've found that you can do that, at least with this bit of software, is you can go to fill and hatch. Hatch a plot. I'm going to make the colour 
red, so I can tell the laser cutter if it's red, lower the power. I'm going to make them 0.1 millimetres apart and I'm going to make them horizontal if I can. Never works, especially when the camera's on. Ah, oh, there. And then I go to OK. Look at that. Now, because I'm going to export this as a DXF file, because nothing's compatible, obviously, um, it does actually record these as proper lines, not as a hatched area as such. So, I'm going to plonk that in the middle of the gear. Finally, it's done. After all these, and you may think to yourself, and I might like to convince myself, it takes this long with lots of prototypes and experimenting and developing, but it doesn't reflect that at all. It just reflects my stupidity. Ridiculous. But finally, I've got it done. And now I'm going to redesign this bit, the 3D printed crank pin, because I realised, of course, I need something to clamp all this together. Stupid. So I'm going to design this with a little flange with a hole on it. So that'll keep it exactly the 11 millimetres away from the centre it needs to be and also clamp this down and also look nice. And this has finished printing. How lovely. 4 hours 48. It looks gorgeous. I'll get that peeled off and emptied from all the support stuff. Lovely. Look at that. The moment of truth. Right, let's have a look. It worked beautifully. 8 millimetres a second at 40%. And it's cut absolutely perfectly. There's no burning or melting or anything. Here we have it. How lovely. A thing of beauty. Which means I can now uh, get one of these 3D printed ones, line it up the right way, because of the little thing here as a reminder. And then it pushes in beautifully in this bit just to make sure it aligns perfectly. Because the one part of the laser cutter that I know does whatever, is sort of constant, is there's the limit switches. So there's a limit switch there and there are limit switch there. So I know that point will always be the same. I also know this point will always be the same. So if I wedge that into the corner, I now know the distance between there when it first switches on and starts up and goes to the origin and where I need to cut this shape so I'll go and have some thoughts and things and then give it a go. Let's all enjoy the moment of truth so I've set the thing here, the focus, switch it on so it finds datum, take the finger off the microphone, right, shut the lid, engage safety switch Ignition and uh, uh. right. Let's have a look. That's not too bad. That's so exciting. That fits in there. The screws fit in perfectly and line up, and the height, which was the important thing, it all fits perfectly. It's all ready to put together. Brilliant. So, luckily, this plastic, the acrylic sheet, comes with a um, pl plastic protective film on both sides, which is perfect. As you laser engrave it, I'll just peel the outside bit off and spray that. That bit's still covered in the protective film, hence the clear window. A silver centre gear. Mm. There's the new one that's going to go on the servo. The collection of exciting parts, the black pointer, the pulley, motor, things, parts, and look at that. And there it is. Perfect. Sticks out the back, about the same depth as that little mini motor does. And it looks nice. It'll all look part and parcel of it. Right, I'll come back to you once I've got this together, and we'll see if we can get it working. I'm connecting everything to plus 5 volts and 0 volts because that's what the Arduino runs off. And with this particular circuit, there's the output, the three control, the three connect, let me calm down a bit. I get all excited when there's an Arduino around. There's the three wires that come off the back of the servo motor. 
um, there are these ones are orange, red, and brown, which is brown is 0 volts, red is plus 5 volts, and orange is the signal that runs tells the server mode to where to go to. Oh, and by the way, these two gears will just do that. I haven't put the, rubber, the um, drive band around the motor yet, but they'll just be able to move freely, which is nice. Another fantastic thing about the Arduino are the examples that come with it. I'm just going to set this one up with a potentiometer, a variable resistor, which again is connected to plus 5 volts, 0 volts. So as I turn it, all fingers and thumbs here, as I turn this, the yellow wire that's connected to the middle, the wiper, will go from plus 5 volts at one side to 0 volts at the other. And I'm going to feed that into an analog input in the Arduino and then the Arduino is going to turn that into a pulse width modulated output which will tell the server where to go in fact I'll put the oh it's the horn in it I've just remembered that what I was trying to work at remember what these things are called the horns that's right right so here's the Arduino integrated development environment IDE which is free to download and it is so well supported and written it is fantastic you don't have to worry about anything in the insides you just plug your computer via the USB port onto an Arduino and you're ready to go well the other great thing this is a project I was working on or a sketch as they call it in Arduino what I can do is file I go to examples comes with all sorts of examples. The simplest one is to get an LED to flash that's on the Arduino board. It's amazing. I want servo, there's servo, and I want knob. And there you go. This is all built in. I haven't had to load this or anything. It all comes complete. It's fantastic. And this example tells you that I need to connect the potentiometer to pin 0 and the servo to pin 9. And then it'll work. What I need to do first of all is to upload this sketch into the Uno that I've got, the Arduino Uno that I'm using, and I'll just click on that. It then compiles it, which you can't see. Well, we will. It's compiling and uploading it. It's putting it from there through the wire onto there. And it has now done that. So now what I can do, I'll plug them in and I'll get back to you. And of course, once you have uploaded your sketch into the Arduino, you can unplug the computer. It never needs to see a computer again, because every time you switch this on, it just runs through the sketch. Year after year after year, whatever you've programmed it with, it will just do that whenever it's powered up. Let's see what happens when I switch it on. Yay! So... We've got these two gears whizzing round, and obviously you could leave that running all the time, or you could have that little motor controlled by one of the outputs of via a transistor from the Arduino. Oop, from the Arduino. So you could switch that starting up and stopping after and before the pointer removed. Let's try the pointer. Zoom in for a zoom in shot. And action. Look at that. Fantastic, and with a newly designed pointer, after doing lots of calculations, it's absolutely perfect. It goes from zero. Oh, I'm so pleased, and it moves so quickly. So you, it is a proper working gauge. That's amazing. I'm so pleased. And I'm so pleased that I have kept everything as simple as possible and only changed that gear and that 3D printed bit. Everything else is the same, and the legend, of course. And what I'll do, actually, I'll put a DXF file, the standard CAD format, on the website so that people can download this and then change text, type, whatever else they want to do. It's a good idea. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please click the subscribe and the bell button. Thanks again. Look forward to seeing you next time.